Well, hello there, guys. Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator video. And as many of you may already know, and some have suggested I do a video on it, Minimator recently had an update with the 1.2.0 pre release. And today we're going to be covering some of the changes that have been introduced to Minimator. So everything's pretty much the same, but the first thing you may notice is this button up here is a little bit new and these lines down here are a little bit new basically these are the half second and full second markers so you can kind of keep up with your timing in your animations you can turn this off by hitting that button up there and that's kind of how minimator has always been before turn that back on so if i go over here to project and i say i want the tempo to be 30 then that means every half second is 15 frames and every full second is 30 frames and these lines and the coloration of the numbers reflect that. So now instead of having to count frames all the time you can actually just use these guides to help you figure out where your half seconds and seconds are while you're animating. So that should really help speed up the workflow for a lot of people I know myself included. Another update that you can't really tell from the interface here is that you can now import Minecraft 1.13 worlds which the previous version couldn't do and there's also updated mobs for Minecraft 1.13 you got the turtles here you got dolphins I think currently some of these are broken I don't recall which ones it is but uh, yeah I think those will probably be fixed soon enough but there are a couple of uh, mobs I think that are a little bit glitched out and I think there's also some issues with water but in any case you can import your Minecraft 1.13 worlds now and uh, use those new mobs for all the glorious animation ideas you have. Uh, we're gonna go onto the background tab and this is where some other new changes have taken place. One of which is the sunlight strength. So if I aim down here, let's turn on rendering. This is your default lighting in Minimator and you know, doesn't look that great. But if you bump this up, then you can brighten things up and give your sunlight some more strength, making your animations look a little bit brighter and a little bit better. So I really like this feature I've been using it in my tinkering and uh, I pretty much always turn it up so it's a good helpful feature there. Another thing, let's tilt back up here, you have story mode clouds now, click that, you get those delicious little kind of gradient effect clouds. I wasn't really sure how I felt about that at first but the more I look at it the more I kind of like it but uh, I don't know, I don't know if I would use it all the time. Definitely a cool feature to implement though, so. Moving on down, another thing you may notice is that the sunlight color and the ambient color have now been changed instead of being default white and this being kind of a, a gray basically. They're now tinted, this has got like a blue tint and this has the yellow tint. I don't know if I like it being that tinted, I feel like usually when I do animation I tint it just slightly, but I don't know, either way it still gets you off on the right foot compared to the last one just being plain white. Another feature that's been added to the background tab here is the sky fog and uh, you have these custom fog colors. You had that in the previous version but now you have two separate ones, one for the sky fog and one for the regular fog or whatever you want to call it. This says custom object color uh, but anyway if I change this let's say we make it pink and then we change this one and make it green then you'll see you have two different fog settings to play with there. I'm not really sure exactly how useful that would be. Maybe if you're trying to create a good sunset look, this would help increase the colors and the vibrance of your horizon and stuff like that. But in any case, you got a little bit more control over that now and I'm sure that'll be helpful to a lot of people. So that's pretty much it for the bulk of the background changes. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go check this out for yourself and look at the change log. But uh, the main changes that have occurred, let's go ahead and pop in our scenery here. This is from the Cinezenry map download server uh, world thing, you know, words. Anyway, so uh, as you'll notice, you got some default brightness on the bright blocks. The torches stand out, the glowstone stands out, and uh, those uh, sea lanterns or whatever they are. Everything's kind of bright by default. So uh, that's pretty much the same as the previous version. But now, let's go ahead and spawn in a camera. This is like what everyone's excited about, of course. We now have new camera features that everyone's been clamoring for for some time. And now you have these options right here and these little uh, three dot lines. If I turn this on, you'll see that that becomes enabled and you can chop that down and enable it at your leisure. And uh, basically, we've got the, the normal usual stuff. Let's go ahead and drag this up so we can see a little bit better. As you can see, the depth of field has been improved. It's a better quality blur. 
than uh, how it used to be. You may have noticed also the fog when I brought it up a, a little bit ago that uh, it has kind of a circular radius now instead of just a flat wall of fog. So that's another thing that's been improved in terms of visual style. One feature that's been added to the depth of field though besides the blur being improved is the blur size is now animatable in the camera settings here. So for instance if you're working in the real world typically if you have a wide angle lens then your depth of field is going to be less noticeable so you'll have like a smaller radius let's just say like 0.3 or something like that and that's kind of how wide angle lenses behave in a way you know you don't have that good shallow depth of field. So let's say if I want to uh, position my camera here, I'm going to zoom on in a bit, like I'm gonna do a tight close up of this right here, and then I might wanna bring up that blur a bit to kind of simulate the telephoto depth of field. So that's a cool feature that you can use now to get more realistic camera effects and usage out of your, you know, simulating aperture and things like that in your animations. Moving on from depth of field to the more uh, exciting thing that everyone loves is the bloom feature is back now. No longer a community build only kind of thing. We've got some good old stuff going on. What I'm going to do is actually make this a night scene because you can see what it does to the sky, but uh, we want to kind of get a good look at what's going on over here. So we're going to drag this down, give us some nice night time, and see what these things will do here so if I go ahead and just drag some of these around you'll see that subtle change especially back here you can turn the radius up and down it's kind of more obvious if you bottom it out turn that all the way up and you can bring your intensity up you can see just how much that kind of washes out and brightens the scene so this kind of gives you a little dreamy effect here in addition to this feature though if we go over here real quick to the settings I'm gonna go to the render tab I believe and come down here to glow. So if we can turn that on and off completely. So you still have this kind of foggy effect, which is interesting, but anyway, we got the glow on. You can turn the radius up here in the settings as well. You can turn the intensity way up. And you have this fall off feature, which is whether or not to enable a second glow effect to simulate the glow effect reaching out further and being brighter. So basically, turn that on and it kind of just intensifies the glow effect even more so. I've kind of found that I like having that on, but of course it really depends on what your scene is and what you're trying to do. But for now, I'm just gonna leave all that at default and uh, you know, just play around with it. But you also get these extra features here to adjust that fall off if you have that enabled. Back here in the camera tab, we're gonna go ahead and check our blend color. What you can do is actually change the color of the glow as well, you know? You can uh, kind of reduce the intensity of the glow also by using darker colors, things like that. Let's say if we want to kind of go with a nightlife neon green, why did I say green? Purple <laughs> kind of look, then you can do that as well. So that's enough stuff with that you can play with and kind of figure out what works best for you and your scenes. Now we have this color correction tab as well, where we can actually increase the contrast. We can increase the brightness. Whoa, everything is crazy there. And then increase the saturation. Some of these you'll want to be careful with because, you know, you can kind of go nuts with this stuff and end up getting some ugly looking things, which I really recommend you go easy on these effects unless you're doing something highly stylized. But, you know, I know you'll want to play around with it. So do so at your heart's content. Anyway, that's pretty much, you know, goes without saying, contrast, brightness, saturation, typical color correction stuff. But one feature that I'm actually kind of excited about, and it's pretty basic, you can you can add this pretty easily in the video editor and stuff, is this vignette. So uh, let me go ahead and bring this up. Oh, that looks horrible. Uh, let's go ahead and turn some of this off real quick. So now we have this vignette feature, and you can see it a bit here. Let me go ahead and just look at something brighter. If I go ahead and turn that on, then you can see these corners dim and that's what vignetting is is you know seeing that kind of dimming of the corners where the light fall off is like technically on the camera sensor or whatever you can increase the softness you can increase or decrease the strength so it's not quite as uh in your face you know things like that but uh yeah you know minecraft i think itself already has like a vignette applied so uh it's pretty cool to have it in minimator now to reflect how Minecraft may look 
itself. But obviously this has a lot of cinematic properties too, and you may want to use vignetting in your animations. So another feature that's been brought back, if you recall the new bending that was applied, well now it is enabled by default, but I do believe we go into the render settings, or the settings, and go into the graphics tab, you can do blocky, and that gives you those straight bends back again, or realistic, which gives you that as well. You'll notice there's some other features in here as well. I don't really feel like I need to cover that. You can go check out the change log and figure out what a lot of this stuff is and play with it yourself. We're just going to talk about the, the basic, normal, you know, the big stuff. All right, so I spawned in this glowstone to show you another new feature. As you can see, it's already glowing by default, but if it weren't a glowing object already, we can go into the graphics tab here and you have this glow option now. So if I click that, You'll see it actually intensifies because it's adding the glow to it, I guess. Uh, but anyway, you also have this only render glow option. So if I click on that, then the actual physical block goes away. You'll see we don't even see it in this view because we don't have any lighting. Basically, it's not rendering. Uh, but we can see it down here in the camera where it's just the glowing block and not actually the full model. So that can be used for a number of things. I've been seeing it and even tried out using it myself to create light shafts and things like that. So pretty nifty feature there. There's also some other features in here. Once again, you can check out the release notes to figure out some more of that for yourself. But that's pretty much it. That's the basics of, uh, you know, the big changes that have come to Minimator. Very exciting. Looking forward to uh, what people come up with from all these changes and all the good stuff that you can get accomplished with it. Big shout out to Nimi and David for all the hard work and everyone else on the team for the development of this uh, update and the future updates to come. Thanks to everyone for watching. Hope you enjoy this update. Be sure to share any of your work. You can hit the Discord link in the description if you want to come chat with everybody or just hit me up in the comments and show off some of the work you're making. Anyway, that's it for me. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.